Hello gentlemen, today we are completing the uh, physical chemical change station labs. So all that you're going to have to do is you don't have to submit anything to me. I will go through in the end and discuss um, what was a physical change and what was a chemical change. But throughout this process, your responsibility is to go through and write down if you believe the station was a physical change or a chemical change and why you think that was. So I'm going to go through each eight stations. I will perform the experiment for you and you will write down and then I will digress in the end and go through which station was which. All right, let's get started with station one. We're in station one. We are doing the mass of steel wool. So what I am doing is I am taking a piece of the wool. I'm going to ball it up. I'm going to measure the mass. So to 0 0.87. Then I'm going to take this wad and pull it apart. And take the mass. 0 0.86, that is just about what I had as my starting mass. Now please determine if the mass of the expanded wad of steel or wool is the same or different. In this case it is the same. Um, so please write down if you believe this is a physical or chemical change. This next one, we are going to be melting a piece of ice and watching the mass recording. I need to get everything ready. I add the piece of ice. I find the beaker, um, I find the mass of my ice. I'm going to now speed up the process by adding heat to our beaker, like so. We will come back and we'll check this ice at the end. At this station, we are going to be dissolving sugar in water. So here I have a water bottle, I have sugar, can't really tell, I have my mass balance. So, the first thing I need to do is fill up my water bottle. So I'm going to fill it up about a third of the way full. And I am going to be placing a small scoop of sugar on my wave boat here. So yeah. Record the mass of the sugar. I am now going to pour the sugar into the bottle. So please hold. Combined mass is nine, 277.11 grams. And I'm going to dissolve my sugar. So remember 277 grams. All right, that looks pretty dissolved. I remass it and I get 277.08 grams and that is complete. I'm going to rinse this bottle out. Please make note of this is a physical or a chemical change. Now we're going to be using Alka-Seltzer tablets. So the first thing I have to do is fill up my water bottle one third full. This is similar to what we just performed with our sugar. However, we appear to lose what we added. We could not see it. Up here to disappear. So I'm going to oops, record the mass of my Alka-Seltzer tablet, the bottle cap, and the bottle. I get 225.37 grams. 
I am now going to put the tablet in the bottle and then I'm going to quickly put our cap on. We're going to swirl until no bubbles are forming from our tablet. Here's our tablet. Bubbles are still forming. Bubbles are still forming. We're going to record the mask two times in this experiment so you can see a change. I'm going to record it with the cap on after it's done and with the cap off. I'll show you that change and that should be able to help you. However, if you notice before my bottle had a lot of cracks and kind of crevices in it and it no longer has that. So that might be a hint onto what's happening. All right, it is dissolved, so I will change camera. Here's the mask with the cap on, 225.11. Here is the mask with the cap off. And you probably heard that fizz. So I have less mask now. What released when I took the cap off? Make this note if it was a physical or chemical change in your notes. For this one, we're going to be dealing with butane gas. It's a little hard to tell. I'm using here. I'll show you, and if you need further explanation, I'll explain it in my um, conversation. Later. Okay. So I add my butane gas in my bag. It comes in as a liquid, and it's very cold but notice what the hap was happening with the bag. Oh, that smells horrible, so I'm gonna wash my hands. But please watch what is happening with the bag and what is happening with the liquid that went in it. If you need a hint, the liquid is disappearing and the bag is filling up with air. So what is my liquid becoming? Take that into consideration and please record if you believe this is a physical or chemical change. We're gonna be combining yeast and hydrogen peroxide in a bag. To do this, I will be adding two pinches of yeast in this bag and then we'll take the weight. I will add the hydrogen peroxide and then we will, there we go. We will um, watch the reaction. So about two pinches worth of yeast. You know, there's some people with some big pinches, so here we go. I'm going to record the mass of my bag with my yeast two grams. Now I'm going to add roughly four milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. I will add it in this bag and I will close it shortly after. Here is my reaction. F, you can tell it is bubbling, and when those bubbles are pop, it is releasing air. So my bag is filling with air during this reaction. Keep that in mind as you make your final measurements. Again, remember I added hydrogen peroxide. However, you can see that it is increasing as time goes on. So you can make an assumption that something is joining with our yeast hydrogen peroxide um, that is not being accounted for. Um, earlier. 
So record if you believe this is a physical or chemical change. Also, isn't that kind of, it's kind of gross. Yep. Also, it is warm. This reaction is a little warm. All right. For this reaction, we are going to be burning a piece of steel wool to see the change. That's a little hard to read there. There we go. All right. So with this, please record the starting mass of our steel wool before burning. I'm going to hold it over the flame for a shorter amount of time. However, it's typically around um, five minutes that everyone holds it. However, you should be able to get a lot of information while I burn it. I'm not gonna use my fingers, so I'm using tongs to hold my steel. I don't want it to catch fire, so I'm moving it through the flame. You do probably see that smoke coming up. And sparks. like an action shot. The smoke's like coming up to the camera. Okay, so I would typically burn this a lot longer. However, for today's sake, you get the gist. I'm setting it in my evaporating dish to um, cool. Let me get this side. To cool before I take my final mass. and it will do that for about one to two minutes. So while that is cooling, we can kind of see the change in mass here. So we started with 0 0.41, we're ending with 0 0.41. When you take into consideration the change, if it's physical or chemical, remember physical is reversible, chemical is irreversible. So keep that in mind when you are making your guess. Okay, record your mass and write down if you believe it's physical or chemical. Here we are going to be doing a mass of precipitate. So we're gonna use two pipettes and we're going to use silver nitrate and sodium chloride in this reaction. I will be showing you the process at which this would be completed, and then I also have one to show you as an example. So first things first, I need to create it so my setup looks something like this. To do that, I will be trimming off one edge of our um, pipette. I'm just using scissors. I want to make sure they fit together. That's the whole purpose. So in this case, they don't fit together. So I'm going to trim it a little higher. Here we go. And now they fit. Next, I will be filling my pipettes about one fourth full with my solutions. So we'll do our sodium, our silver nitrate. There we go. And now my sodium chloride. Okay. Now very carefully, I will be combining the two. Yeah, just a second. There we go. 
I'm going to find the mass of this before the reaction takes place. It is 4.49 grams. Now, watch closely. I will be pouring the silver nitrate in our sodium chloride solution. Here we see a color change. However, it might be difficult to see on camera. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. Do you see what is forming at the bottom? At the bottom is actually a solid forming. If you recall in our lecture on last week when we had the test, if you were at home, I talked about a precipitate. A precipitate is when something new is formed in the bottom. So my silver nitrate and my sodium chloride, when they combine, my silver nitrate will break apart, my sodium chloride breaks apart, and my silver bonds with my chloride and my sodium bonds with my nitrate. So I have a silver chloride solid and a sodium nitrate solution, like liquid. So if I let this sit for a while, it would settle out completely and I'd be able to see my solid. And I could filter this out and measure that. However, when they first come together, it turns white and it's hard to see. So make note of that and um, write down if you believe this is a chemical or physical change and why, and we're gonna go check on the ice. It's been a while since we checked on the ice and my mask bounced right off. However, you should probably be able to tell if it's a physical or a chemical change from here. Record that down and we will discuss what is what. Now I'm going to go through and tell you what was a physical and what was a chemical change out of our stations. Also, my science competitions team left me art, so I hope you can enjoy that. So I'll go through physical first and I'll explain why each one is physical and then I'll go through the chemical, explain why each one is chemical. So with the physical, our station one, which is our steel wool stretch, is considered a physical change because I'm physically changing. However, the mass is not changing and I'm not doing anything because I could wad that back up and make it become a marble or I can continue stretching it out. So it is a physical change because it is reversible and there's no change in mass. My other one was my dissolving uh, or my um, ice changing the states of matter. It went from a solid to a liquid. I could physically see that. However, if I wanted, I could reverse it and make it ice again, or I could have it all go to liquid and turn it into a gas and reverse it. So it is physical because I can reverse it. My third one is my dissolving sugar. And the reason for that is that is also reversible. There was no physical, like I could physically see that it dissolved, but I could evaporate all of that water out and be left with the sugar behind. It did not make anything new. It was just sugar dissolved in water and I could easily reverse that as well. My last one was my butane bag of gas because it went from a liquid to a, sol um, to a gas in the bag. That is a physical change as well. So those are my four physical changes. Now all I have left are my chemical changes, which are a little hard to tell at some points. Number one, my Alka-Seltzer, if you noticed, we had a gas form into that bottle and when I released it, our mass changed. However, when I combine with the Alka-Seltzer in the water, a new gas is formed. It is not water evaporating. It is not Alka-Seltzer gas evaporating. It is a mix between the Alka-Seltzer and the water that is the gas, so it creates something new. And it's very difficult to put that gas back into an Alka-Seltzer tablet once that's dissolved, and so I cannot reverse that reaction. My other chemical change was when I was burning steel, which this one might have been really hard to tell. But a good way to note is it's not reversible. It's really hard to unburn something. And so in that case, it makes it a chemical change because I can't unburn steel. My other one was my precipitate reaction. So that one with the silver nitrate. Um, if you recall, a precipitate is something new. It's unreversible. And so right there is a dead giveaway. It is a chemical change. But if you need a better explanation, I can give you one. But a precipitate forms, which means it's a chemical change. And our last one, our yeast in the bag is a chemical change because the gas released with our hydrogen peroxide and our yeast solution was a new gas. It was neither yeast nor hydrogen peroxide solely, it was a mix. And so while those bubbles popped, it released this gas into the bag. Um, if you open the bag, it would have smelled horrible, so we kept it in the bag and I disposed of it that way. However, 
it's very hard to reverse yeast and hydrogen peroxide reaction, um, so chemical. That is all the stations that I have. I hope that makes a lot of sense. You do not have to turn anything into me. Um, this was just solely for your practice. Um, we'll continue practicing it throughout the um, unit as well as probably the year, um, but it was just for you to really kind of understand and grasp, and I didn't want to grade you on your observations because it's how you understand. Um, make sure if you have any questions to go back through and read through the information, but that is all I have for you today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!